Welcome to the wedding of Pete and Carolyn. Pray with me. Father, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you, Lord, that you brought these two together for your love that is manifest in them. We pray that you might be with us now as they make commitments before you and these witnesses, that you might be the binding factor, that you would be elevated and lifted up here. We pray that you might help us to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. It begs the question, who gives this woman to this man? I do. Then you gotta let her go. wedding starts back at the beginning in the book of Genesis when God created man, put him in a perfect place, gave him just one thing he shouldn't do, and that's the thing he went and did. It says, And the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. No amens. Amen. 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 Oh, okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> This is a responsive thing. 
The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air, and he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. Whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. And so Adam gave names to all the cattle, the birds of the air, and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. The first thing God did with Adam was it showed it had a need. And the animals weren't going to cut it. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam as he slept. He took one of his ribs, or one of his sides, his feminine side. And he closed up the flesh in its place. And the rib which the Lord God had taken out of man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. <laughs> the word naked tickled you, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's in a crowd this big. You say naked and somebody's going to giggle. The interesting thing is, when God created Adam and Eve, they had no parents. And yet the first things he says is, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother. Which tells me God was saying something for the future, not for the present. There's something of leaving the old paradigm, the old authority structure of the family, and beginning a new one. Pete and Carolyn are doing that today. Where everyone else takes a lesser seat to one another. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife. The fuller understanding is that he will pursue her with energy and effort, sacrificing himself in time and in his treasures and with his talents, that he will pursue his wife. That is upon the husband to do for the wife. And it says they shall become one flesh. They're to become one not just in the physical manner, but also in every other manner. Everything that's yours is mine, and what's mine is yours. All of your debt becomes mine. All of my finances become yours. All of my finances become yours. And everything that I am and everything that I have, I am sharing mutually. It's a three-legged race. It's what marriage is. It's a joining of two people for life. And it says they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. There was complete openness and honesty, a sharing of the most intimate parts of themselves with one another. And there was no shame. There were no secrets. There was no sin. There's no secret life when you're married. Everything is known by the other person. No secret bank accounts. No secret relationships. No secret anything. Everything is mutually shared, including your mental illness. <laughs> don't pretend you don't have one. <laughs> Pete and Carolyn have undergone some counseling, some information. So yes, they know what they're getting into. The scripture says in Ephesians chapter 5 that we are to submit to one another out of fear of God. Submitting to one another because God is true and God sees. The commitment to the wife is first, and it says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. It's very explicit in the Scriptures that there's an order. Carolyn has decided she will submit to this man. I find that to be a miracle. <laughs> How many of you are married, ladies? How many of you are married? I find it a miracle that you can submit to the man you're married to. I've been married for 40 years and my wife has to submit to me. Sorry, it's just the way it is. But the scripture goes on to say, husbands, Love your wives 
just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Marriage is a submissive wife to her husband and a husband who sacrifices himself for his wife. Amen? Amen. I heard predominantly ladies on that one. Yes. <laughs> a good marriage is a self-sacrificing man and a submissive wife. Out of reverence for God, we do these things. And so we come together to join these two in holy matrimony, something that's not to be taken lightly. It is a serious covenant before God and witnesses, and that's why we're here. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then we have hot dogs. <laughs> I'd like to bring the rings up. Thank you, delivery men. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, as you place the ring on her finger, because you will be first, I want you to hear what I'm about to say to you, which are your vows. And if they are so, say, I do. You may place the ring on her finger. Peter, is it your intention this day to be wedded to your wife, Carolyn? I do. To honor and sacrifice for her, to have and to hold her from this day forward, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and health, to love and to cherish till death parts you both, according to God's holy ordinance, to pledge your faithfulness before God and these witnesses, if so, say, I do. I will. <laughs> Carolyn, as you place that ring upon his finger, on his left hand. Carolyn, is it your intention today to love, to honor, sacrifice, and obey your husband? To have him and hold him from this day forward, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness or in health? to love and to cherish till death parts you, according to God's holy ordinance? Do you pledge your faithfulness before God and to these witnesses? If so, say, I do. Jesus says in Matthew 19, verses five and six, for this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And so they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the opportunity of coming together and seeing a representative of Christ in the church. We thank you, Lord, for marriage that you created, for male and female being distinctly different and being complementarian. We thank you, Lord, for your grace at this time and these people's lives. And I thank you for those who are witnessed here to the covenant that they make to one another before you. I pray that you help us to do that which is glorifying to you in your eyes. In Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to announce for the first time Peter and Carolyn Adragna. You may kiss your brother.
Yeah, I missed it. Just remember. I That was beautiful. Let me drag my chair. Hallelujah. <laughs>